see some examples of that in a few okay. seconds. Other questions on the assignment? All right, so it's two parts. First chapter of drawing from the model, and the second part is, is compiling information with your team. All right, so let's get started. So this is gonna be kind of a brief introduction to what a diagram is. Um, fr from your experience as a class, do you guys um, have experience drawing diagrams? Mm -hmm either from other classes or from other, you know, work that you've done? I don't know. No. Does anyone have any experience in drawing a diagram? In Rhino, yes. Okay. Um, so what diagrams have you done in, in the past, Henry? Um, a lot of different shape diagrams, like weird shapes. <laughs> What's the purpose of a diagram? To help explain a thought process that you might have had. Sure. Or at least the process that you got to your final design. Okay. Yeah. So you're explaining your logic. You're explaining your thinking graphically with a graphic image, right? You're, you're saying, okay, here's how we arrived at this idea. Um, it could be explaining your process. There's other things that it can explain. Can, can you guys think of other things? The first diagram that comes to mind is like a sun path diagram. Maybe. Okay. So we can diagram how the sun's going to travel on the site, how our building maybe responds to that. Sure. What else? What are some other things that we diagram as architects? Um, circulation of people. Okay, circulation of people. What was the other one? Someone else. Uh, I said movement, kind movement. of the same thing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, how do people move throughout a building? How do they move throughout a site? Those are all, you know, considerations that, as architects, we have to design. We're designing for, for movement. We're designing for circulation and and habitable spaces. So, this example, this diagram here. What do you think this is communicating? What maybe category would we put this in? Like, how do you describe? What, you're seeing? what was that? Probably like a concept diagram. Yeah. So this is a concept for, for a project. Um, this is a built um, uh, high rise in, in New York. This is an apartment complex. Um, does anyone, can anyone see what specifically the architect was trying to communicate here? The massing. Absolutely. Yeah, this is the massing of the project. And so what specifically about massing, uh, Adriel, is this communicating? What, what do you think they're, the point that they want to get across is? Um, how they ended up the final form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so how did they do that? How did they end up with that final form? They started with the initial form on the left and then I guess made some changes mm. to like have the final result. Okay. Um, so really what the architect was saying here is that there's two different typologies and in, in different, you know, in tower constraint, you know, in multifamily buildings, a lot of people will design with a courtyard, which is what you see here, you know, this courtyard typology. And there's the tower typology where you build a large tower with a, a plinth on the bottom where this can be commercial. You can have retail on the ground level and then apartments above. So the logic here was what if we took that typology, merged it with this courtyard, we still have a tower, but now we, we also maintain this really nice light well. So light can get deep into the, the building. Okay. So it's this idea that we can merge ideas to create a final product. So this is a process diagram, but it's also the massing. It's showing how the thought process worked to arrive at this final result. And so we'll, in this class, we're going to look at the techniques of how to draw something like this. How do we draw the line work to convey this idea? 
but we're also going to think of the theory behind this, you know, this idea of mixing different building typologies to arrive at something new. Um, how do you communicate that to a jury or to your peers who've never seen your project before? Imagine for a second that we, we didn't show this, right? We only showed this final design and we forced the audience to come up with an opinion of it, right? Some people like it, some people would hate it. But a diagram is great because it shows you the process of how you arrived at that final result. And that's really important because in this class, you're gonna be doing a lot of that. Um, you're gonna be communicating ideas that people have never seen before. And how you, how you approach that communication is vital. That's often the number one indicator of success or failure is how you're able to present the problem. Um, if you just say, here's the design, what do you think? It's not often going to get a very good response. But if you say, here's where I started, right? Society tells me that we need, you know, the massing of this tower and these are the types of buildings you'll see in New York. Smaller projects that are more, you know, thoughtful and contemplative will have a courtyard. You're, you know, kind of creating a protected outdoor space for people. And then I merged the two and ended up with this result, right? So now I, I'm not forcing you to just give me your opinion on this. I'm telling you how I arrived there. I'm walking you step by step and arriving at a design that is something that you can be on board with because you saw how I got there, right? So I'm not just kind of surprising you with, with a design. I'm, I'm walking you through step by step how I got there, okay? So when we present in this class, I'm going to say this multiple times. When we present, we always start with the why, then the how, and then the what, okay? That's a really important sequence of presentation skills. I would write that down in your sketchbooks, write why, how, what. And if you wanna you know, do a quick sketch of this to remind yourself what we were talking about, go ahead and do that because that's gonna be something that I push you guys in your presentations. Whenever you're presenting, you're always gonna start with the why. So what your idea was, what the concept was, what your inspiration was then the how, how you went around, how you went about doing it, how you drew that model, how you modeled it, maybe the techniques you used, you know, the how here would be, well, we merged the two. So we took the height of that tower and, you know, we, we liked the views that we were able to get from here. We liked the, the location of kind of placing the mass on this corner. And then finally, the what is, you know, how the project responds, what it's doing, what it finally looks like. Okay. But that sequence of why, how, and what, that's actually what distinguishes great presentations like TED Talks and, you know, uh, keynote lectures. That's what distinguishes the greats from, uh, you know, more elementary pre presentations where they immediately jump to, here's the project or here's, here's the final design. And it, it's just from there on, it's just backtracking of, okay, justifying why it looks like that. Right. So you don't want to be in that situation where you're justifying something. You always want to walk someone through it and then let that final result be the thing that, you know, everyone's already come to that conclusion at that point, they're all on board. Okay, so we'll, we'll do this a lot. We'll talk a lot about this throughout the semester, but I wanted you to see some examples of diagrams in this lecture and to, to kind of learn the, the strategies of, of how to present. Um, does anyone recognize this diagram? Ikea, right? Yeah, yeah, this is an Ikea diagram. So you'll see this a lot. Uh, what's this telling us? You need two people. Right. You need two people. Don't try to do it on your own. Um, but this is a diagram. This is a really simple diagram. There's no text involved. You don't need to say this in different languages. We all know what this is mean, what this means when we see it. Um, so this is an effective communication technique. 
And I want you guys to start seeing opportunities for communicating things graphically, right? Using graphics to communicate an idea. And it can be a complex idea that we communicate in a very simple way. It doesn't have to be, you know, diagrams can be very simple, right? Notice the simplicity of this, right? I'm not showing the street. I'm not showing adjacent buildings. It's very simple, right? So simplicity is important. Another aspect of a good diagram is continuity, right? It's almost like this set of diagrams, and this is a sequence of different things that they're diagramming on the site. Here, they're looking at the streets. Here, they're showing bike routes. Here, vehicle transportation and bus routes, right? These are four different topics they're showing. Each one has a different color, but the backdrop is the same. So they're using this control, which is kind of this grayscale, you know, background, same site, same backdrop, but the only thing that's changing is the accent color. And that accent color is the thing that they're communicating. So when you see these diagrams, think of not only the techniques they're using, but how you could apply them to your own projects. I want you all stealing these. I want you to steal these ideas, incorporate them into your precedent study. This is a kind of a materials diagram we did for a project. This is in um, Bangkok, Thailand. Um, this was a, it's kind of a food and beverage shopping mall extension. It's an extension to a larger shopping mall. Um, this is called Groove is the name of the building. Um, and we, we have all these out, indoor, outdoor spaces, uh, wine bars, um, you know, you can get, you know, uh, breweries, things like that for, for just really nice experience. But what we wanted to communicate here was the textures, the materials that we were using. So we we're using this kind of wood frame for the punch outs and we wanted to have these hanging plants. Um, Thailand is a very um, humid climate so and, and hot. So plants can easily grow in pretty much every, uh, on every corner. So we wanted to incorporate that into the project. So when you look at this as a diagram, notice how we're not creating a very realistic rendering, right? This is just a simple, um, it's a perspective 3D view. It's being cut, right? You see the, the poche, this like gray thickness, that's the, because the building itself is being cut. Imagine a knife just cutting through the building. So it's kind of abstract, but we're, we're highlighting all the materials and inspiration this is a Neil Denari uh, facade that he did with perforated metal panels. So that was something we wanted to achieve here. So we looked at a number of materials and inspiration that we're using to connect and just tying those in, kind of annotating where this would go, right? So instead of doing a realistic rendering, we did a more diagrammatic rendering and we're highlighting materials, okay? so. Always think about the, the graphic language you're using, right? The color, the decision to use a dashed line here, the decision to round the edges of these, you know, all that can be done in Illustrator, but it takes a designer to, to kind of consider those things and to know when to use them and what, what techniques to, to employ. And again, when you see images that are interesting or noteworthy, just sketch them in your sketchbook. It'll, it'll be a good reminder of, what you saw and, and just have a memory of that, you know, and anything you hear, you know, write that down. And again, you're not going to be tested on it, but you'll use it. It's more of a practical thing. Um, a few years ago, there was a competition that Volvo put out. They wanted to introduce their new electric car. So um, they put out this competition for architects around the world to propose uh, different uh, pavilions. So kind of a showcase canopy for the car. So their idea was let's create a really interesting art installation that kind of highlights the, the fact that, Hey, Volvo is doing an all electric car. We want to highlight that. So our office put in a proposal. This is an international competition. So architects from all over the world submitted designs for this. Our proposal was, well, what if instead of just being a shade canopy, 
what if we shaded the car? What if it had solar panels in it and it could charge the car as well? Um, and then when, when it was done charging it, the whole thing could fold into a crate that would fit in the trunk of the car. So it was this idea of mobile charging and using the sun to charge the car. Um, so we sent that proposal in and we won. So we won the competition. Now came the uh, kind of responsibility of building it. So we, we partnered with a company in, in Chicago called Fabric Images. They, their expertise is in large architectural fabrics. So they're, they're used to building large fabric canopies for buildings and things. So we presented a really unique project to them. They'd never done this before, but we had to communicate how this thing would work. So we created this series of diagrams to communicate how this thing would come out of a trunk of a car. This is the Volvo V60, how we could create a base for it. That base would have um, hollow steel tubes that would fit together. The idea that Alvin, uh, my boss had for this project was, uh, you know, college laundry hampers, those, those mesh uh, kind of wire hampers that could just spring open. His idea was let's do that on a large scale. Well, on a large scale, if it were to spring open, it would be really violent and kind of destructive. So we still kept the same idea of a fabric mesh being held taut by steel, uh, steel perimeter thing keeping it in tension um, but we wanted to communicate how that would work so these are steel rods that kind of fit through sleeves of fabric and then the the solar panels would be embedded in the fabric so diagramming that uh, this was a competition we did in in china um, this was a large competition they wanted to do a shopping mall so we did a series of designs and renders for this this ended up not getting built because the developer that put this competition on in the end, they didn't even own the land. They thought they were, they'd be able to, to get it from the government, but in the end they weren't able to secure it. So this project never got built, but the idea here was it'd be a massive, you see the size of a person here, massive shopping mall with um, offices for the, the development company in, in these high rise kind of ends here. And so the, the idea, the concept behind this project was we want people to slow down and kind of meander and, and walk through all of these. These would be, you know, pop-up shops, uh, retail um, stores like that. So we wanted to slow people down and have them navigate through this, but the whole site itself would be kind of like a river. And, you know, these would be like kind of boulders along that river that slow the water down. So it slows the path of people throughout the site. So we diagrammed it again, we, we used, um, you know, the 3D model. So this is modeled in Rhino. We showed the floor plates. We labeled each kind of programmatic element. So we're showing what's office, what's, uh, you know, their headquarters, hotel, all that's labeled here. And then we're also diagramming circulation. So this is, these are the circulation paths that the public would take as they navigate through the site. So we wanted to show how people would move, where the entrances were. So there's a lot of information in this diagram, probably too much in my opinion. Uh, it's always good to be kind of self-critical, but here's the, you know, here's where parking would be. Um, I think this could probably be two separate diagrams, one for program, right? Listing where the program is, and this could be a whole other diagram for the circulation of how people navigate through the building. And so this was kind of a concept diagram, um, how this idea the yin yang could be broken up. And, you know, this kind of the shape of the site is kind of reminiscent of that, you know, separating something with, and then allowing circulation to kind of flow through this kind of like a river. This was another international competition we did. This is um, for a library in South Korea. Uh, this is the Daegu library that we designed. We didn't win this competition. Um, 
the the competition winner was really bland it was just this very simple like white box pretty much but the idea for this project uh, this competition entry we wanted people this is all for uh, when i was working at synthesis design and architecture um, so alvin is the the director of that he teaches at usc so for those who transfer to usc you may get to meet him uh, I may bring him in to, to review your projects throughout the semester. So you, you guys may meet him there as well. Um, but this project was interesting. The whole idea was that we would pull the landscape. So we'd pull this landscape up into the building and you'd, you'd slowly walk through the, the, the library and the book stacks would be embedded in the floor. They'd kind of merge out from it. And so it was all about these, this kind of meandering uh, landscape the whole building itself would be this kind of terrain or landscape. So in terms of diagramming that, you know, this is a rendering, this is a digital rendering, computer generated. We wanted to come up with a, a series of diagrams that describe the project, right? That really opened it up and helped people understand what's happening in it. So again, a lot going on here, um, almost too convoluted in my opinion, but we, we showed a lot of information. So we're, basically slicing the building, you see it getting cut and then each floor plate gets lifted up. And then the building facade is also getting pulled off. So this is a exploded axon. So an axon drawing is when you draw a, a three-dimensional object with parallel lines. So instead of a perspective where there would be a vanishing point somewhere out here and somewhere out here, and all of those lines would connect. An axon has this line parallel with this line, parallel with this line, so there is no vanishing point. So a drawing like this is a good way of communicating a 3D design and it lets you kind of see the proportion and, and massing of, of something in 3D really well. So an exploded axon is simply an axonometric diagram with uh, you know, floor plates and the building itself pulled apart. You're pulling it. That's why it's called exploded because you're kind of exploding it to see what's happening inside. Okay, so various elements are called out here. The same backdrop, but now, you know, describing the circulation, how people would kind of ramp up through the project, how vertical circulation would be handled in the core, and then, you know, the other circulation path that goes through this. So this is an, another good example showing kind of the program massing on the left. So what, you know, what's the function of each room? And then on the right showing the circulation, however, you know, circuitous that looks, looks like a pretzel, but this is the circulation diagram on the right on the right. Um, what's the purpose of this diagram? You can see the logic here. Different versions of the same volume. The what of a, of a volume? Did you say differentiation? Oh, no, like different versions of the same oh. volume. Okay. These could be different versions. So, anyone see anything else? So, how indoor space can be transferred into outside outdoor space? Yeah, that's a good one. Sure. Does anyone see a process diagram here? Is it a remodeling? Remodel? Maybe. Um, I actually don't know this project, um, but this it's a it's kind of a sequence diagram. I think how to take one space, right? Just a traditional, you know, rectangular volume, how to slice it, you know, they're cutting it down the middle, and then at least conceptually flipping that second half on top of the first half create, you know, creating a glass opening here and then creating this, you know, vertical courtyard or vertical landscape on the right. So 
it's an idea. It's a concept, right? Where you're taking one thing and transforming it into something else. So I think that's a, it's an interesting idea to show a sequence of logic like this. Now, I don't know whether this was actually built this way, where they took maybe a steel shipping container, cut it in half and flipped it around, or if this is just a concept, right? Architecturally, sometimes we have concepts for how something looks, right? It looks like the building is made up of things that collided and sit on top of each other, but they actually didn't collide, but it's meant to look like that. It's meant to kind of evoke that idea when you see it or when you experience it. Okay, so another building mass where you take this kind of cruciform floor plan, push and pull. So again, we're seeing the sequence of logic, pushing and pulling, um, creating stairs that go up and then slicing and, and manipulating that shape further. So it's a sequence diagram going from one thing to another using arrows to highlight how it's being manipulated. Okay, and notice the simplicity of this, right? There's a kind of a thickened line on the perimeter of the model. And that's a way of, that's a diagramming technique that you'll see. It's a way of uh, clearly articulating what the purpose of each kind of self-contained uh, object is. And just one color, right? That's another thing that I'm gonna have you guys do in your presentations is just choose one theme color for the whole thing. So you're not using all kinds of different colors and it gets confusing. This is another diagram uh, showing circulation. So different entrances into a building, you know, and, and what's interesting here is not the fact that, not just the building design, but the fact that they're they're using these kind of flow patterns to highlight, they could have easily just done arrows, but it kind of shows, you know, the fact that they did these, these lines of flow, they show how people are being condensed. Um, so you have more space here and it becomes kind of this density in the center of the project, which is interesting. So it's the graphics can graphics can communicate the design intent. They don't have to just be you know, the means to an end. It doesn't just have to be kind of like a dumb arrow. It could be kind of a, an effect almost. Um, this is a bubble diagram. So when we start a project, um, we often, as architects, we often start with a bubble diagram just to show how the program of the building, at least in floor plan, will work together, right? How do we how do we approach each room of the building, each space? Are they connected kind of radially like this? Is it more of a linear approach to the building where you, you go through one space to get to the next? But a, a bubble diagram like this is a really clear way of communicating a design. And it's one that I encourage all of you to start doing. You could start doing it for your project um, that you're your case studies that you're studying. You can look at how someone walks through the building and how they go from one space to another. You know, the seating area is connected to the bathroom and the lounge. Uh, you know, there's access there. So start thinking in terms of bubble diagrams. When you start designing your own projects, we're going to start this way too. So this is one that we're going to be doing in class a lot. So this is a good skill to develop. Um, we think vertically too, right? As architects, we're not just thinking in two dimensions, we're thinking three dimensionally. So this is a really good stacking diagram. So this is describing to someone um, what each program space will be, right? Occupying this whole height of the tower. Um, when I worked for other offices, we would design, we would, we would do drawings like this because often the client wouldn't understand, you know, what we mean when they see, you know, a very technical drawing, right? So something like this is clear, color-coded, easy for a client to understand and understand how the, the program works three-dimensionally in section, right? So this is kind of a perspective. It's like a perspective section. We're cutting through the building, right? You're seeing this thick black poche, Again, that's suggesting that the building is being sliced. 
and we're seeing how the plaza works, how this, how these spaces work three dimensionally. And you get a glimpse of the building facade here as well. So there's a lot of information that this can communicate. There's underground parking, bus terminal, plaza. You can almost see how the light would kind of spill into all of these courtyards, right into these light wells. And then another series of diagrams, uh, again, showing the same backdrop. So they have the massing of the building, but they're highlighting specific elements, right? Specific program in that mass of the building. So you're given kind of this wireframe view and you're, you know, each slide or each sequence of this is a different program from management to amenities, uh, business, right? Each is called out. Right, but notice the constant, right? Notice that control, right? The backdrop of this is just black and white line work. That doesn't change. So by keeping that consistent, it focuses your eye on the thing that they want to highlight, right? They want you to see this kind of green shaded pattern, this orange, right? They don't want you to get distracted by the backdrop. Okay, so keeping it consistent is very important. Um, there's an account I want you guys to follow on Instagram called AXO Madness. They post um, images, student work, professional work, but they're all axon drawings. So they're really beautiful axonometric drawings, again, parallel lines. This is an exploded axon. So it's seeing, you're seeing the, the floor plans, you're seeing everything pulled apart to kind of reveal what the interior of the building looks like. You can get a good understanding of program, of you know, circulation, all of that. Another set of drawings from that Instagram account, another exploded axon. You know, you don't need a lot of color to communicate something like this. It'd be very simple. Right. Notice how the context here is grayed out and um, you know, light, it's desaturated and the opacity is turned down so that the, this building can really kind of show up. Another set of diagrams, I think this is also from Axo Madness. So showing the, just the different architectural moves and, and highlighting different functions of the building using a very consistent color scheme. So this was a, a site plan that I, I drew kind of diagrammatic when I was in grad school. And we wanted to look at the whole idea was autonomous cars that you take a train, you arrive at your destination and then the autonomous car kind of takes you locally to where you need to go in the city. So this was the whole kind of drop off idea where you take the train, lets you off here. And then um, the cars would, drive in, pick you up and take you where you need to go. So we did this whole site analysis. We looked at potential routes for each of these uh, kind of trains to take and then locations where the drop-off points would happen and your autonomous car would take you to your local destination. So we did, we did some demographic studies. We looked at the neighborhoods. Um, compiled. And, and this is what your site analysis will look like when once we get to that phase of the class. Um, you'll be doing some studies on demographics, on history of the site, and we'll dive deep into um, creating graphics and, and creating the content like this that communicates some things. And, and you'll use this as a learning tool. You guys will learn from